Shalom to all children of God wherever you are. I thank God for the partnership between Scripture Union and GNPI for giving me this noble chance to speak with you again. Many people have struggled with unforgiveness for quite a long time, irrespective of their position in church, family, and even different jobs. I wish I had a chance to interview some people for you to confirm my point. To forgive is to stop feeling angry or resentful towards someone for an offense they have committed to you. When you no longer feel angry or pain or wish to punish someone who hurt you. Let's look at how other people defined forgiveness. Psychologists define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or group or a group of people who have harmed you, regardless whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting. Rather, it means letting go of the pain, the incident which is causing you pain. When do you know that you have forgiven? When you remember the offense committed to you without any resentment or feeling of pain, that you can even cry. But you have feelings of Ebenezer, the Lord has brought me this far, that the Lord has brought you out of the situation. Now let's look at the opposite of forgiveness. The opposite of forgiveness is unforgiveness. To me, this is a cancer that eats you up, and before you realize it, it should have done you a great harm that may be beyond repair. Let's look at what unforgiveness does to our lives. When you don't forgive, it brings anger and bitterness to your life. Unforgiveness brings depression. You have had so many people who are in depression. One of the causes is unforgiveness. A person struggling with unforgiveness loses meaning of life. You've seen some people going crazy. Some of them go mad because they no longer see the reason why they should live. Unforgiveness brings decreased immunity. If you look that up, you realize that when people keep falling sick, sometimes the cause of that is because they are struggling with unforgiveness. The Bible tells us in Mark 11, 25, 26, and Matthew 6, 14 to 15, that when we do not forgive, even the prayers we pray to God are not answered. Just imagine how many prayers you have said to God and they've not been answered because you have refused to forgive somebody. Unforgiveness brings isolation. You do not want to be among people. You want to be alone because of the bitterness and anger that is in you. Sometimes anger causes lack of appetite. You do not want to eat because you're all full of bitterness. When you do not forgive, you look older because every other time your face is gloomy and you do not have a smile. I would like to share my testimony because the reason why I chose to share with you this topic is because I have been there. Some time back when I had just gotten born again, a brother in church. Now, it's very interesting that it's the brother in church who hurt me. A brother in church hurt me so much. He spoke about me falsely. This affected me so much that whenever I went to church and this brother was there, I did not have peace during service. I cried, was gloomy. I moved out of just church just to get him out of my sight. My thinking was negative all the time. I hated everybody. One thing I realized, though, was that I was suffering. And besides me suffering, this guy was going on with his life. And this even hurt me the more. I will be sharing more of this testimony as we go on. How to deal with forgiveness. According to my experience and sharing uh, with other people, I have discovered that forgiveness is not easy. And it's not just a thing you can walk in and out as you wish. Forgiveness is a matter of the heart. It comes supernaturally. When one is hurt, a lot of things go wrong, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and socially, if you may like. So for one to get over it, it takes effort and support. But the standard that helps and fits in very well 
is the God-given scriptures. Like for instance, the scripture I am sharing with you is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 that says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. So, if you're struggling with unforgiveness, the best standard to help you out of uh, forgiveness is the Bible, is the scriptures. So, immerse yourself in scriptures all the time. Let's look at briefly the process of forgiveness. Like I told you earlier, that it's not just something you can walk in and out. It is a process. It comes from one end to the other. It begins from a point to another for you to receive your deliverance. Ephesians 4.32 reads, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgive you. One of the processes that I would like to share with you as you get to forgive is uncover your anger. In most cases, when you are hurt, it is innate that we will hide the anger. But venting it out is the beginning of healing. Find somebody, talk to somebody, and try to let the anger out. Cry out. Speak whatever you want to speak. But just letting out this anger would be a very good beginning of healing. Secondly, Decide to forgive. I, according to my experience, deciding to forgive has been a very big challenge because I would be quiet and I would be like, why should it be me beginning to go and forgive him? That person should come. So you, decide, you, you, you are held somewhere and you cannot let go. But deciding to forgive is very pertinent in this process. Holding on to anger doesn't hurt anybody but it hurts you, the one holding it. It produces all kinds of stress chemicals that flood your body and make you sick. Every other time you're sick and you're wondering what is the problem, but it's some pain in you that is causing the sickness. Forgiveness is for you and me. The earlier we deal with it, the safer we may be. In anger, we sometimes get tempted to revenge. I know as I talk about revenge, somebody's not in their head and they know, yes, this is true. You revenge, you want to pay back. And this might result in legal implications. For instance, if you went and attacked somebody, beat them up, you're not just going to go easy with it. You might be taken to police and things might not go well with you. E.g., you had people, you've had people who have killed people. As you decide to forgive, ask God to help you out. In reference to my scenario, I fasted and asked God to help me out of it because I tried, but I couldn't make it. So I chose to go and fall before God. The third part of the process is work on forgiveness. Evaluate yourself, for instance, if I continue like this, what is the benefit? What are the effects? I know the negatives will outweigh the positives. If you can go somewhere, e.g. vacation or visit a friend or relatives, or ponder about the next step. Just give yourself space. Just get off the, the environment where the person who offended you is just to think about why am I held here? What benefit am I going to get after this? And when you do that, your mind is going to be opened to the positive. The fourth process, release yourself from the prison of unforgiveness. Giving forgiveness to an offender is an event, whereas finding relief from pain is a process. Release yourself. I want to tell you that in this time when you're not forgiving, it is a complete prison. You are tied somewhere and you cannot do anything. You're controlled by this person. The fifth process is prayer. Prayer is very important in any struggle in life. In my experience, I just went to God sobbing and only asking God for help to forgive. By the way, when forgiveness comes your way, you never know. You'll just wake up one morning and it will be gone. Let's look at the benefits of forgiveness. So, first of all, I would like to share about forgiveness removes pain. When you forgive, this pain and grudge leaves your heart. Because I would like to share about the way unforgiveness clogs your heart. And I have some illustrations here of uh, some paper cut cutouts of the heart. When your heart is 
full of unforgiveness. This is how your heart is clogged. It's all filled up with things. You have jealousy, you have anger, you have hatred, you have bitterness. All this is full in your heart. And with all this, the Holy Spirit has no room in your life because you have a lot of junk that needs to be cleared up. In the, in the Bible, the first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 says, Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He is God. You do not expect him to stay comfortably in one's heart that is clogged. So it is very pertinent for us to clear our hearts so that the Holy Spirit finds room. You can compare these two hearts. This one is all clogged. This one here is all clogged with a lot of things. A lot of things are going around there. And there is no room for the Holy Spirit. But when you see this one, it's all cleared up. And the Holy Spirit is at the center of it. Secondly, forgiveness allows us to grow in our spiritual life and help others to grow too. When you're forgiven, like for instance, this uh, the scenario I went through with my brother in church, I struggled to forgive. Right now when I speak about forgiveness, I speak from an experience. And when I tell somebody, I'm not just telling them something I read from somewhere. I'm telling them something I went through. And this has an impact to somebody who is going through the same challenge. So, when you forgive, it allows you to grow spiritually and you also help others to grow too. Thirdly, when we resent someone, we give them power to control us. Man, this guy controlled my life. When I went to church, I did not look at the pastor. I did not even enjoy the music that was sung. But my eye and my focus was upon this. And you know, he was this very outgoing guy, and he was happy, greeting people, hugging people. And then me, I was just dying. So he controlled my life. When you do not forgive somebody, this person controls your life. It's usually very uncomfortable to be around them. They become a steering wheel in your life. They control what you do and go. Hence, you become powerless. So forgive and get hold of yourself. When I forgive him... I got help. I got my life back. I didn't struggle. If it was greeting, I greeted him normally and chatted with him. Forgiveness gives us back our health, e.g. physical, mental well-being. You get back your life because you no longer have the other bitterness that makes you lose sleep, that makes you lose appetite. Forgiveness clears the cobwebs and you can see clearly again. When I speak about cobwebs, you know these things, when there is cobweb in the door or in a place you're going, you might not be able to see things clearly. But when these cobwebs are cleared, you can see things clearly again. You can love clearly. You can see things positively. After forgiving, you begin seeing the strength of people around you. And yet before then, I only saw negative things before uh, in the people, in the lives of people that I saw. In my experience, one Sunday... We were at church, and the pastor asked us to greet some people around the church. This was his usual way of doing things before he preached. So when he asked us to greet people around us, initially I would greet but still dodge this brother around. I didn't want to greet him. But this Sunday, I think God had purposed and destined it that it will be where I'm getting my deliverance. So as soon as I shook this guy's hand, you don't know what I felt. I would feel the pieces of my life getting back. You know how the pieces of the puzzle, the puzzle get back, every piece in its position, and a very heavy load uh, over, I think about 100 kilograms fell off my shoulder. Whew, I got my life back again. I felt I was relieved. I felt happy. I felt I had wasted a lot of my time. Let me wind up with Luke uh, 15, 11 to 25. And this is the story of the prodigal son. Many of you know this story. Many preachers have preached about it. He offended the father, but when he chose to come back to his father and thought he would be a servant in his father's home, instead, the father forgave him and threw a party for him. Turn around and return to your father. He will forgive you like I gave you First John 1, 9. If anyone is watching this message and hasn't got saved, choose to believe in God today through his son, Jesus Christ. And for those who have been saved and have been living a life of unforgiveness, you lived a wasted life. 
If God forgive us, who are you not to forgive, and yet you also offend others? May the Holy Spirit convict us all to forgive our brothers and sisters. Be blessed, and please stay safe.